The German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer remarked, a prison cell is actually a good comparison for the situation of Advent. You wait and hope, and you do this or that, but the door is locked and, you can, and can only be opened from the outside. Bonhoeffer wrote this based on his own experiences as political prisoner in a, Berlin, in a Berlin prison. In the Gospel reading today, we have the same situation. Here is John, incarcerated by, incarcerated by Herod Antipas, locked up as a political prisoner, completely dependent on the food and the care from his disciples. And he experiences the same. The locked door only opens from one side. In the confinement of his prison, he spends his time waiting and thinking. And when you wait and think, thoughts might make their way to the surface that you were able to keep quiet before. You are also dependent on news from outside. Instead of forming an opinion on first-hand experience, you have to rely on impressions and interpretations from other people. So John waits, hopes, hears rumors about Jesus, he doubts and despairs. Yes, he, the one that said to Jesus, I should be baptized by you, and yet you come to me, doubts and despairs. And this is not an a, well, I think I overestimated him, but what does it matter moment. This is existential and deeply personal. John had thought he had recognized the Messiah in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And now, imprisoned, everything seems to fall apart. Jesus is not doing what he had hoped, what he, had hoped he would, baptizing with the Holy Spirit and fire. With the winnowing fork in his hand, he will clear the threshing floor, gather his wheat into the granary, but burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Wield the axe, bring the fire, renew the world. Bring justice, fairness, and order. Continue the cry for repentance. That's just not what Jesus is doing, according to the rumors that reach John in the prison cell. Jesus has changed nothing. Who is Jesus then? What does this all mean? And who is he, John the baptizer, who has staked his entire life on Jesus? A fraud? So he has to know, and he sends his disciples to Jesus with a message. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Are you the one? This question is at the heart of both our Christian faith in general and the Advent season in particular. Are you the one, Jesus, the Messiah, Emmanuel, God among us? If so, why is nothing changing? Why are people still suffering under oppression and injustice? Why is it not getting better, but rather worse? What are we waiting for? If you are the Messiah, just do your job. But Jesus, as usual, doesn't say, yep, it's me. Don't fear, just trust. Because would that be enough for you to calm consuming doubts? I honestly think it wouldn't work for me. Instead, Jesus calls on John's disciples to sharpen their own senses, form their own opinion, to see and hear. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have good news brought to them. Go back to John and tell him what you hear and see. Tell him your stories. Tell him what only stories and not creeds will reveal quiet as they are, scattered as they are, questionable as they are. Why? Because there needs to be a deeper understanding of who Jesus is. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, only makes sense when we hear the stories behind it. 
How did you experience God with us in your life? Did you witness, see, and hear healing change in our world, in people's lives? Or did you experience the opposite? What is your story? Advent is exactly about this, the stories, and all the stories. So search your faith, ask doubtful questions. Be alert, see and hear, and sit with it. The healing and the suffering, the hope and despair, the joy and doubt. We tend to, too often to blunt the sharp edges, to soften the blows, to make God just okay. Have you ever, ever used an at least statement? At least it's not cancer. At least you can still walk. At least you got to speak to her one last time. We attempt to comfort when we use at least. But often it is just making a painful moment more bearable for us and not the person concerned. Some stories just aren't okay. How can John's story be okay? He dies a senseless death that makes a mockery of the divine justice he preached all his life. And we all know stories that aren't okay either. Jesus calls us to see and to heal all the stories of the kingdom. We are invited to honor doubt and despair and silence as reasonable reactions to a broken world, to create sacred space for grief, mourn freely and rage against injustice, to let joy be joy, sorrow be sorrow, and horror be horror. We are invited to feel deeply because God does. Are you the one who is coming? John asks in despair and yearning. You decide. Jesus answers in love. Amen.